Narito ang isang ulat tungkol sa mga kasalukuyang issue sa sektor ng edukasyon sa Pilipinas. Isiniwalat ni Honorable Johnny Pimentel ang isang anomalya sa Department of Education na nagdudulot ng kakulangan sa mga silid-aralan at paaralan sa inyong lugar. Ayon sa kanya, ito ang dahilan kung bakit may mga estudyante ang nagsisiksikan sa mga silid-aralan at umiiral ang tatlong shift na schedule sa mga pampublikong paaralan. Ipinakita ni Congressman Pimentel ang kanyang maiinit na interpelasyon kasama si dating Department of Education Undersecretary at Chief of Staff Epimaco Densing. Ating panoorin ang mga kaganapan sa nakaraang pagdinig. Dito lang yan sa Pilipinas Balita Now. Mr. Chair, may I now respond? Yes, please. Uh, well, first respond. of all, it's a blatant lie asking for commission. And that's the very reason I'm process oriented. Tasabihin mo, Mr. Chair, process oriented po ako, Mr. Chair. Ang mga congressmen, gusto mo mag-executive session tayo, ipapakita ko sa iyo mga congressmen. Sige, wala akong nakau wala akong nakausap. Ay, yung sa Manila nyo, you I was lying. not I was never with the lying, architect Dexon. Order please. I, I one, for one minute. Chair. Suspension chair. is declared by the chair. It would be useless for this representation to ask further questions to the resource person because he's a pathological liar. What I will do, Mr. Chair, is gather more evidences to prove that what I am saying is true, that Mr. Ipimako Densing is a very corrupt person. He says a kalawag in the public service. He has been asking commissions for the release of funds for the school buildings. Eh, papatunayan ko po yan sa next hearing. I'll gather more uh, information. Ito pa lang sasabihin ko sa'yo, uh, Mr. Dinsing. Dapat wag ka nang bumalik sa gobyerno. The government does not need your kind. You are a very corrupt person making your position to your advantage. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Okay, we will now proceed. Uh, the first to interpolate, uh, the chair would like to recognize the Honorable Johnny Pimentel. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. My interpolation would focus on the implementation of infrastructure projects in DepEd. May I, like, I would like to direct my questions to Mr. Uh, Ipimako Dinsing. Uh, Mr. Dinsing? Are you still connected with the uh, DepEd? Your Honor, may I, Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Mr. Ebemako. I left DepEd you are effective recognized. September 30, uh, Your Honor. September 30, 2024. 2024. Why did you leave DepEd, Mr. Dinsing? Uh, with the intention of uh, running for public office, Your Honor. Hindi ba kayo tinanggal sa DepEd? Ah, hindi po. Because from what I gathered, uh, you were made to submit a courtesy resignation. Apo, and I had, I had. Yes, Apo. you you did. Apo. And uh, your courtesy resignation was accepted. Tama po yan. It was short of saying, a courteous way of saying that you are out of the bed. Actually, from the information that I got, nakipa, nakiusap ka pa na ma-retain dun sa DepEd. Ah, no. But no, uh, hindi the administration po. did not allow it. But anyway... You say, the, Singh, may I remind you to please address the chair? I apologize, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Anyway, that is another matter. Kailan po kayo na appoint sa DepEd, Mr. Dinsing? Uh, effective, uh, yung document is July 18, 2022. And I acted as Chief of Staff until uh, December 31. 2022. July 18, 2022 to September 30, 2024. Apa. So, on your, on yung first appointment mo, pagpasok mo sa DepEd, anong binigay na position sa iyo? Until December 31, Chief of Staff muna po ako. Dahil uh, ina-arrange pa yung mga, opo, ina-arrange pa yung mga bagong appointees at the time. Or is the first appointee at the time, uh, Your Honor? No, when you entered July 18, were you appointed as Chief of Staff, Undersecretary? Uh, Undersecretary, Chief of Staff, yes. Undersecretary. Chief of Staff, yes. Undersecretary for what? Chief of Staff. 
So concurrent yon under secretary and uh, chief of staff. Tama po. Uh, that was the first position. You served the then as uh, chief of staff of uh, Vice President Sala. Tama po yan, as of December 31. So sabay kayong pumasok? Uh, I had lang ba siya? By, uh, July 1 po siya. Ako, uh, July 18 officially. Aside from the debted portfolio, ano pang uh, government service na napasukan mo na? Uh, prior to DepEd, I was DALG Undersecretary. Uh, from what year? From 2018 to 2022, and I entered DALG as Assistant Secretary for Plans and Programs from 2016 to 2018. Prior and, to DALG uh, appointment? I was from the private sector, Your Honor. So in short, uh, as a government public servant, you only served as DILG under se Assistant Secretary and DepEd uh, under Secretary. Tama po yan. Eight years in total, Your Honor. Aside from being a Chief of Staff, ano pa bang uh, ang designation sa inyo? Uh, no first six months po in office, yun lang po. Then when the Matatag Agenda was formulated, the form reform, form reform areas included infrastructure. So by January 31, during the basic education report, I was announced to take care of the infrastructure strand, yeah, newly created, Your Honor. So what does that cover? You were in charge of the school infrastructure and facilities. Tama po yan. Is this a division or the department? Or a program? Ano bang uh, ibig sabihin itong It's school? a strand, Your Honor, like the curriculum and teaching strand, like the administration strand. So it's a policy level uh, position, Your Honor. So what covers, anong mandato mo dito school infrastructure and facilities? It's to create policy on how infrastructure should be uh, made, creating the long-term strategic direction. Nagkaroon kami ng comprehensive uh, school infrastructure development plan for 2030. Then, coordination with DPWH because the implementer of the new construction of uh, DepEd is DPWH, not DepEd. Were you involved in the procurement of the school buildings? No, no Your Honor. But you were in charge of uh, the allocation of the budget of the school buildings? Uh, the identification, Your Honor. We have a committee to do that. And ikaw ang in charge doon sa identification? Ako uh, ako ang in charge, pero I had a committee created for the identification. Okay. Ano ba ang uh, mga programs doon sa school infrastructure and facilities? So it includes, uh, Your Honor, new construction uh, implemented by the DPWH. Then we have the school furnitures uh, implemented by the regional offices. And we have the last mile school, electrification, water systems, uh, and implemented by the division offices. So if you started in 2022, in short, you handled the budget for 2023 and also for 2024, hindi po ba? Uh, for the school so buildings? For the, for the 2023 po, hindi po. Uh, the school buildings was under the administration strand. So only I only took over 2023. What to was the budget? What was the budget of the 2023 school building program? The original budget was 5.9 billion. Yun po ang nasa NEP. And it that was, was for 2023. 23 po. That, uh, explain ko original po. 5.9 billion uh, sa NEP. It was only limited to 5th and 6th class municipality. Then, pagdating po ng, paglabas po ng JA, nadagdagan po ng 9.7 billion. So, a total of 15.6 billion. Uh, 2023 JA. For 2024, 2024, Sanep po is 19.7. By when the GAA came out, it became 24.7 billion for 2024. So, you covered in the SIF yung basic education facilities front programs, hindi po ba? Opo, opo. Tama po yun. So, under din sa yun. Ang alin po yung? Yung BEFF, the opo. basic education when facilities program. When you say BFF, that's the total infrastructure program. But there is a discrepancy. And sabi mo kanina, 19.7 billion ang NEP. allocated. NEP. But it states here that in the 2023 GAA, the amount of 23,417,897,000 pesos was appropriated in the GAA for uh, 2023. Ah, Your Honor, that's BFF. So that includes new construction, which is 
15.6 billion, my electrification, my uh, water system, my repairs, around 4.9 billion, and I think last mile school. So a total of 23 billion, Your Honor. So you were the one in charge for the identification. Tama po yan. Aside from the identification, ano pa ba ang uh, mandato mo as an undersecretary? What exactly is the, your designation? Undersecretary for what? For Under operations, for administration? Starting 2023, Undersecretary for School Infrastructure and Facilities. Starting 2023. So, sakop mo nga lahat ng mga school buildings? Tama po, tama po. Okay. So, you were the ones who decided sinong bibigyan ng school buildings kasi sabi mo kanina, ikaw ang nag-identify. Uh, so, you were the ones, kasi ang proseso po niyan, nagpapadala yung mga school super, uh, superintendent division or rather the schools division in each district or in each province, they have proposals for the repair, for the construction, and it goes to your office. And then, ikaw ang nag-identify sinong popondohan. Dahil hindi naman pwedeng pondohan lahat, hindi po ba? Tama po, tama po. Correct. Pero for purpose, this purpose, Your Honor, I made sure that it is equitably allocated. That's why in August 4, 2023, we created a national technical working group composed of four area managers, members of Education Facilities Division, merong operation strand, outside, no? outside there's a, a SIF strand, para ho fair ang allocation and based on needs. And there's a criteria. The criteria is 70% should be allocated to those which are in makeshifts, yung talagang walang classroom from the very beginning, and 30% uh, allocated dun sa may shortage, kagaya ng uh, two shifts, three shifts, yung po shortage po yun. So, so nakafocus po dun. Um, merong committee na nagdi-decide. Tama po yun. Kung sinong bibigyan ng allocation. Opo. Based on the proposed uh, list of the divisions. Hindi Tama po. po. Uh, we, we assume na validated na rin siya. So in short, ikaw talaga ang nagdi-decide kung sinong binibigyan. Once na na nagawa na na listahan ng yung komite, I just accept it at ease because uh, I assume that they follow the criteria that we set. But I think you're the one who is really deciding because if I recall, during the budget he hearing, Mr. Chair, uh, for 2023, ang uh, pinadala po ni Mr. Dinsing during the party uh, consultations, ang uh, pinadala ng uh, DepEd during the party consultations, if you remember, uh, for every budget hearings, before the pre-plenary budget hearings, eh, may pinapadala po ng mga representative. In most cases, it's the secretary. I recall in 2023, during the budget deliberations, kayo ang pinadala na uh, regarding sa mga school buildings. Tama po yun. Uh, I remember that was, I, I think, third week of August, August 21 or 22, Tapos at that time, tapos na po yung listahan na ginawa ng uh, National Technical Working Group. I think the list was supposed to be around 15.1 billion. Yun po ang pinresent namin sa consultation. So in short, you are really have a big role. You have the big role in identifying and uh, locating funds for uh, the different divisions with regards to school buildings. Hindi po ba? Tama po. Tama po. Ngayon, ang tanong ko, in the 2024 budget or the national expenditure program, there was an allocation for uh, Surigao del Sur, in fact, two districts. One in the amount of 103 million pesos for, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Tagbina National High School, and another 70 million pesos for Barobo National High School. Uh, but unfortunately, in fact, there was already a notice from DepEd to DPWH to conduct the biddings already. However, uh, all of a sudden, the biddings were stopped because accordingly, the funds are not available. Paano po nangyari yun, Mr. Chair, eh, na nakalagay na nga doon sa national expenditure programs, pagdating doon sa 2024, eh, nawala yung budget. Ang nangyari po noon, Mr. Chair, sabi ko nga, meron na identify na 15.1 billion yung National Technical Working Group, which we adopted as is. Yun po ang pinesent namin sa mga ating congressman. But Mr. Chair, it ne was already included in the NEP. 
Paano mawawala yun? Okay. Ang nangyari sa... po, Mr. Chair, ganito. Nung paglabas po ng General Appropriations Bill, yung 19.7 naging 24.7 billion, pero yung 14.7 billion nagkaroon po ng Annex A. In other words, these are the projects uh, identified by the various congressmen. So, yung aming 15.1 nawala. So, since nawala siya, ang una namin ginawa, yung lahat ng may malalaking allocation na 100 million pataas, yun ang una namin kinat para ma-allocate sa mga maliliit. So, yung aming 15.1 at the time naging 5.8 billion na lamang lumiit po ng gusto. So, Mr. Chair, in short, you took it upon yourself to cut the budget without notifying the congressmen. Sabi mo kanina, may mga identification mga congressmen. You took it upon yourself being the head of the SIF to cut the budgets of uh, the different uh, uh, proposed school buildings. Ganun ba? Uh, that was uh, because there's no more budget in the general appropriations bill. We had to cut for th that everybody will also be allocated. So how did you decide, Mr. Chair, kung anong kapuputuloy, anong uh, tatanggalin doon, anong bibigyan? Well, ang decision lang muna is patanggalin yung mga malalaki, which is yung mga 100 million pataas, 80 million pataas. Because, Mr. Chair, as uh, I already mentioned, that policy was really to go multi-story kasi wala na pong buildable space. Kaya medyo malalaki po yung ating building ngayon to maximize buildable space. So, yun po ang nauna. Yung mga 100 million pataas, 80 million pataas. So, yun natira mga 50, 40 million, two-story, three-story. Eh. Yung uh, multi-story, yung tinanggal ninyo dun sa district ko, Mr. Chair. Yun ang tinanggal ninyo. Well, And no, no, not only that, there was also a 200 million peso project in uh, District 1 uh, na tinanggal din ninyo? Uh, hindi ako familiar in detail pero I don't remember there's a 200 million school building in, in any school for that matter. You know what, Mr. Chair? I'll give you an explanation bakit ninyo tinanggal. Do you know a certain uh, Mr. Greg Murillo? Ah, yes, sir. Mr. Chair. Sabi ko kanina, Mr. Chair, the 180 million pesos was already included in the national expenditure program. But upon bidding, it was recalled. But prior to the bidding, this Mr. Greg Murillo, who is a close friend of Mr. Dinsing, called me. At ito ang sinabi niya, Kamusta po kayo, Congressman? Sabi ko mabuti naman. Congressman, meron po la kayong uh, budget na 170 million pesos para sa district mo. O sabi ko, yun nga, naka-schedule na for bidding. In fact, uh, 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 binibidding na yata. Uh, sir, um, pwede daw muna, mag-usap daw muna kayo ni Mr. Dinsing. Those exactly, the, the words of him, pwede tayo mag-harap-harap tayo. Baka naman pwede makipagkita ka kay Mr. Dinsing. And sabi ko, para saan? Eh, alam mo na, may pag-uusapan kayo. The, right there and then, I already knew anong pag-uusapan. Si Mr. Dinsing hihingi ng komisyon. So, I told Mr. Greg Murillo, whom you admitted is your good friend, sinabi ko doon kay Mr. Murillo, why will I give money to Mr. Dinsing when this has already been allocated in the National Expenditure Program? So I did not entertain that anymore. And Mr. Chair, lo and behold, the funds did not come through. Kinansel yung bidding, and then nawala na nga because I did not come across to the request of Mr. Dinsing na humingi siya ng komisyon. And not only that, Mr. Dinsing, hindi lang akong biktima niyan. Marami pong mga congressmen and for the record, I want to put it in record, maraming mga congressmen na nagsabi din sa akin that you approach them. In fact, there is one congressman in Visayas that you were asking for 18% commission of the school buildings. Kasi ikaw nga ang nagdidesisyon kung sinong bibigyan, sino ang tatanggalan. In fact, it is on record. You just said kanina na ikaw ang nagdesisyon kung sinong tatanggalan, sinong bibigyan. Not only that, sometime last year or probably within this year, you met with some of the congressmen in Manila. I already talked to them. 
humarap ka doon, may kasama ka pang contractor. Do you know a certain architect, Ralph Texon? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yung po ang kasama mo nung humarap ka sa congressman sa Manila. And just the same, you were implying, you were asking for a commission, hindi lang yun, sinabi mo pa na yung contractor mong gagawa itong si Mr. Uh, uh, architect Ralph Texon. And that is the reason why Mr. Chair tinanggal si Mr. Dinsing sa DepEd. He did not resign. I knew from the very beginning that he will be taken out because there were already anomalies in the uh, distribution and the allocation of uh, uh, school buildings program. In fact, Mr. Chair, nung pag-alis niya sa DepEd, may isa pang inipit na 34 million pesos sa Bislig Central Elementary School, which is in my district. Now, I will not mention any more the name. One official of the new administration sa DepEd called me. Anong sabi sa akin, Mr. Densing? Kung meron ka bang project na 34 million sa Bislig Central uh, Elementary School? Sabi ko, meron. Ano, nakabiding na? Eh, hindi, in-stop nga eh. Eh, sir, ito, ilalabas na namin. Inipit ho ni Mr. Densing. And that is the reason why, Mr. Chair, this person was taken out of DepEd because of his anomalous practices in DepEd. Yung po ang katotohanan niyan. Nakiusap ka pa na maritain ka, pero hindi na tinanggap ni Sen. Sani Angara. And that's good for DepEd because you have been doing the rounds para ka nang ah, nagbebenta ng isda. You, inaalak mo sa lahat ng congressmen ang allocation ng uh, school buildings asking for a commission. Mr. Chair, may I now respond? Yes, please uh, Well, first respond. of all, it's a blatant lie asking for commission. It is the very reason I'm process-oriented. Sasabihin mo, Mr. Chair, process-oriented po ako, Mr. Chair. Ang mga congressmen, gusto mo mag-executive session tayo, ipapakita ko sa iyo mga congressmen. Sige, wala akong, naka wala akong nakausap. Uh, yung sa Manila nyo, I was, not, I was never with the lying, architect Texon. Order, please. One, one, you for one minute, Mr. Chair. suspension is declared by the Chair. Mr. Chair, please allow me to, to come up with my parochial concern. Because I heard a while ago that uh, Yusek, uh, Yusek uh, Densing was in charge of the allocation of the BEFF, or Basic Educational Facilities. Tama po ba? Mr. Chair, if I may. Yusek Densing, you're That's recognized. Correct, correct. Pwede ko bang malaman bakit walang napunta sa Antipolo na school building? Sir, uh... During your term, or the term of VP uh, Sara? Ang nahawakan ko po actually is 24. Hindi, tinatanong ko. Sagutin sir, mo muna ako. Pero sir, ang sa Antipolo kasi, Antipolo, Taytay, tinanong ko rin kasi yan dun sa technical working group, wala na pong buildable space. Yan pong binanggit sa akin. Walang buildable space. Opo. There's a fund with the, the DepEd na pambili ng spaces. Di po ba? Uh, wala po. Yun po ang nilabi namin nung nakaraang G, uh, budget. That is for GA 2022? 24 po, 24. Hindi, hindi, tinatanong ko nga eh. Ah, sa 22 uh, po wala. Congressman ako nung 2022. Apo. My I, wife was a congresswoman. I wasn't there yet, but I, uh, there was no fund, I was not Apo, there pero yet. Pero wala no. kaming natatanggap. Apo. Your records will bear me out. Apo, apo. I As recognize. a matter of fact, the first time, 2022, nag-usap po tayo. Kasi, uh, kinausap po ninyo yung mga kuwan eh, yung mga part, members ng parties. Di po ba? And we talk. Sinabi ko yung concern ko na yun. Eh. We, we did. Uh, in fact, nung ginawa nga nila, may mga uh, districts nga, legislative districts na wala. Now, may I ask you, uh, uh, Yusek Densing, is that uh, following the mandate of the Constitution that you are supposed to equitably distribute government resources? That's the part, that's the part of the criteria that I mentioned to the National Technical yeah. Working Group. Tinatanong nga kita eh. Apo. Uh, when you do not allocate school buildings doon sa isang lugar, is that equitable distribution? Uh, again, sir, the problem was there, is, there are no buildable spaces in the area. 
Sino po ang nagsabi? Yung National Technical Working Group po. Itong 2024, humingi ako. Opo. 2024, humingi ako. There are buildable spaces. Pero wala pa rin. And you cannot explain that to me. Uh, well, sir, I could not answer because the, the fund was really small at the time. Uh, originally at 9.7 NEP. So what you're trying to tell me, Yusek, is that hindi po priority doon yung distrito ko po. No, sir. Priority po inyo dahil mataas po ang uh, shortage sa antipolo. Uh, kasi nag, nag, uh, meron pa kami three shifts eh. Tap Opo. Oh. Kaya po, priority kayo, tay, -tay. Uh, pero, pero wala pa rin kami. Kung priority kami sa mata ninyo, eh bakit hindi kami nabibigyan? Uh, o yun baka bag... tama yung sinasabi ni Johnny Pimentel? Ay, hindi po tama yan. No. Hindi po tama yan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Congressman Johnny Pimentel. It would be useless for this representation to ask further questions to the resource person because he's a pathological liar. What I will do, Mr. Chair, is gather more evidences to prove that what I am saying is true, that Mr. Ipimako Densing is a very corrupt person. He says a kalawag in the public service. He has been asking commissions for the release of funds for the school buildings. Ay papatunayan ko po yan sa next hearing. I'll gather more uh, information. Ito pa lang sasabihin ko sa iyo, uh, Mr. Densing. Dapat wag ka nang bumalik sa gobyerno. The government does not need your kind. You are a very corrupt person making your position to your advantage. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe to Kila Penis Bolita now. Until the next video.